Welcome to Bosch's technical support on demand video series. CCTV Fundamentals Module 2, CCTV, Light, and Color. In this module, we'll be discussing light colors, CRI or the color rendering index, white balance, light comparisons, how to measure light, and how to measure reflectance. Probably the most overlooked consideration when installing a CCTV system is lighting and with that the color of light and how it will affect your installation. Color temperatures refer to the color of a light source and it is measured using the Kelvin temperature scale. Light itself has no heat, it is just a measurement of the color temperature that it actually produces. While CCTV technology today will do a lot to enhance color, a color temperature that is too warm can make objects appear orangish. And if a color temperature from lighting is too cool, it can make objects appear blue or green. This brings us to the color rendering index. The CRI system has been in place for several years. It helps indicate how colors will appear naturally under different types of light sources. Next, we want to define what white balance is. All CCTV camera sensors have their own unique color sensitivity. If you record color video, both indoor and outdoor with a CCTV camera with the white balance off, you would be able to see the color differences that exist in the different lighting scenarios. Activating a camera's white balance allows the camera to automatically compensate for the color shifts between different lighting environments so that they appear as natural as daylight. This is something that our brain does for us automatically. Now let's take a look at a chart to see what kind of CRI different types of lights actually provide. It is important to note the trade-off of cost to performance. The porous color rendition generally has the lowest operating costs, but this means you'll need a better CCTV camera to compensate for poor lighting conditions. Let's take a look at a few examples of how different cameras react differently in different lighting conditions, both normal, outdoor, and low lighting. Remember to choose the right camera for the job that you're doing, but also remember to choose the right lighting that best suits that camera. When we measure light, we use certain terms such as lumens and lux. Lumens are a measurement of the perceived power of light. Lumens per square foot equals foot candles. A foot candle is a scientific measurement of a standard candle one foot away from a one foot square surface and the brightness that it produces. Next we want to talk about light intensity. This is another overlooked topic, especially when we're dealing with IR lighting. As objects move away from a light source, there is a loss of light intensity. If the distance of an object from the light source is doubled, the intensity of the light is quartered. This is known as the inverse square law of light and should be taken into consideration when you're doing a CCTV installation. For your CCTV system to do the job that it was intended for, you have to take into consideration the scenario, the environment, the camera, and the lighting. The last topic that we want to cover in this module is reflectance. One characteristic of light is that it travels in a straight line. When it hits an object, it is reflected, and it will bounce off of that object in the exact same angle in which it struck the object. If light is not reflected, it is absorbed. Most objects reflect and absorb, but in different degrees. Your choice of CCTV camera needs to be able to compensate for the reflectance factor of any outdoor or environmental surface. If we look at an asphalt parking lot, it reflects very little light. But if we look at that same parking lot covered in snow, will your camera compensate for both conditions? Is the video produced after color compensation acceptable? Does it fit within the specifications set forth for the installation? This concludes this module. Thank you.